Hello everybody, today's video I'm going to show you a product spotlight on the Oldsmobile uh, 400, 425, 455 big block Speedmaster low rise single plane intake and I'll compare it and contrast it to the venerable old Torker single plane intake and I'm going to show you something very surprising, a really surprising feature about this intake you may not like unless you've really seen some pictures of this. I don't think it shows up on the website um, or on the ads. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so guys, I'm going to do what's called a staying in my lane. I'm not going to give you tons and tons of details about this. I'm not going to make recommendations. Number one, can't do that without knowing engine specifics. Uh, number two, um, you know, I'm not an engine builder, a race car guy, right? Uh, but what I am is a guy that has an, a degree in mechanical engineering technology. You know, um, last car I had went 12s. You know, it's not that fast by today's standards. Um, this one should go a lot faster. But the point, point is, is there's some important value I can bring you. So... Speedmasters come on the scene um, and, you know, taking the place by storm, they make Oldsmobile aluminum cylinder heads that are very affordable, not very great out of the box, but a great starting platform. And especially if you're building a car, you know, typical like a GM, like a Cutlass, an A-body Cutlass or a G-body Cutlass or something like that, and you want to start going a little bit faster, single plane intake, single plane intake is better for higher RPM. Um, you know, just oversimplifying. Um, and some people say it doesn't give you as good low RPM performance, but the uh, um, step above an Edelbrock Performer Performer RPM dual plane intake, which I'll cut in a picture of here. This picture is of the Edelbrock Big Block Performer intake. There is now a uh, dual plane high rise air gap intake. Uh, I believe Speedmaster makes one for sure, and Edelbrock does. Um, but when you go a step above that as a single plane, it was the torquer is the step above that. You can see kind of a lower rise single plane intake. And then I'll show you here a few shots of a Victor. The Victor intake is mammoth. That's your max all-out effort uh, uh, intake. So the Speedmaster, what do we see in both of the Speedmaster versus the Torker? By the way, the Torker is no, it, it, as of October of 2023, is not being sold. So I just bought this when I got it used. I paid 250 bucks for it. That seems to be about the going rate for them. This is from Summit Racing Equipment, $400, 399 so just to kind of give you a range. And this looks like, obviously, it's in pretty good shape here, okay? Um, so um, both of them are single plane. Both of them, you can see, are about the same height. And from uh, its approximate measurement from about where the bottom of the intake is, the torquer is about uh, four and three quarters inches. Speedmaster is about five inches. So the torquer is about a quarter inch shorter. I don't think that's a huge concern for people running these style intakes. Uh, one feature you'll see on the Speedmaster, it has already bungs that are machined flat. Uh, they're drilled down in and dimpled. The center point there. Those are bungs for electronic fuel injection. That's a big plus. You've got a spread bore here, intake carburetor flange on the torquer. Square bore here, and I believe this would fit like the 4150 series of Holly carburetors. Now, by the way, you can get flange adapters. See something like this, right? With a spread bore on one side, square bore on the other side. Okay, so not a big deal, but maybe a consideration for you. Now, let me get right to a couple of the features. One of the features that some people don't like about the Torker are these outer four runners here. If you look down from the top, you see the runners here are kinked, right? And that is because they make clearance for that center bolt hole, okay? So let me try and show you this. So here's where we're looking at here. Do you see that kink? And if we look on the inside of the runner, and I'll try to get this in the light. So here's the uh, kinked outer runner. The outside of the runner looks fine. But there's that kink. Can you see it there? It's like a taper. You see a taper at the top of the port. Let me try and get the light on it just right. There it is. So I don't think it's horrible. Can't tell you flow numbers, can't tell you what it does, but I would assume you get some flow separation around that corner at the top. Um, I'm gonna show you pictures of what I did on a previous torque intake I had on my last engine. I took it to a machine shop, a welding shop, I should say, and they filled in this entire area here, including covering the bolt holes. Now, remember, you've got a bolt hole on either side of the pair of runners. I don't think that bolt hole is necessary. They welded over the bolt hole and that entire area, filled it, the TIG welded it, I believe, 
and I was able to port that and I ground that out, you know, from the, I don't know if anybody would care about this, but the torquer actually does have a provision right here for the, the heat tube for the choke, which I don't think anybody using this intake needs that, but it is there, okay? Now over to the Speedmaster, and let me show you one of the features. Um, I purchased this and I think I'm returning it. I haven't used it, hasn't been put on anything, just take out of the box in the bag. I mean, it's a beautiful intake. You don't have that kinking on these runners, if you see. They're very nice, smoothly transitioned, right? Um, but let me try and get to the point. If you can look down the runners here. Okay. To show you this, I need to get the camera just right. We are now looking down the runners. Okay, at a pair of runners, and it's this way in all four corners. Can you see that? That, way down there, that is the divider to the runner. It stops, and then there is a ramp there. So the runner, let me get a measurement tool here. So that runner stops. A not exact measurement, I'm gonna try and get it close as I can. I would say it stops a good three and a half inches, about three and a half inches shy. It goes back about three and a half inches. Let me do that one more time. Yeah, that's a, that is more than three inches, about three and a half inches of where the runners are actually Siamese. Can you see that? Let me move the camera around a little bit. See that? The runners are Siamese. Let me show you from the other side. So if I'm looking up the runner here, can see where that wall ends. Let me shine the light from the outer port, right? You see that? It only goes back. I mean, the shorter spot on the bottom there, it's only about two inches. And it tapers up, okay, and down. So these intake manifolds both are obviously not maximum effort competition engines, right? And um, my, my friend Ken Kirshner said something yesterday that made a ton of sense. You know, he simplify, he's great at simplifying ideas. He said you should build your engine and the car to do its primary purpose the best. So if you're building a street car that you will sometimes race, that's usually when you're going to use these intakes, right? So if you're building a street car that you're going to sometimes race, then that means it's a street car first. My engine builder says that he believes this is not going to be good for driving around on the street. I just don't see how it's going to improve um, you know, performance at the high end either with a carburetor, maybe with a fuel injection system. Maybe that would be great, but I just don't like it. Um, I don't think you can weld that up. Um, and if you did, I don't think you can get a consistent run or cross section, which, uh, you know, I know there's some harmonics that, you know, uh, aid if you can get the harmonics right in um, cylinder, cylinder filling. So I just wanted to show you this. Um, I didn't want to say that, you know, good or bad. Um, for my engine build, my engine build is Speedmaster ported, uh, going to be port, ported Speedmaster heads with 207, uh, 1.71 inch exhaust valves. Uh, it's a hydraulic roller camshaft. It's going to be a 482 cubic inch engine with a 425 steel crank offset ground for four and a quarter inch stroke and 2.2 inch, uh, seven inch long Chevy big block rods. Uh, the cam is a hydraulic roller, as I said. The camshaft specs are 605, 609 lift. Um, and the duration is going to be 249, 254, uh, intake exhaust at 50. Um, you know, but I'm going to go with the torquer because the, the Siamese runners there kind of scare me, and we agreed. I don't think it's going to be beneficial. So that's what we've got. Um, it, the only other offerings we really have, like I said, the Victor intake is about 10 inches tall. I mean, it's massive. Um, you're going to have hood clearance problems. Um, you, you know, it's just a huge intake. It's going to be built for more maximum effort, um, not for street driving. It's like your solid roller cam for, you know, 12, 13 to 1 engine. Um, and then other than that, the only other choices I think you really have in the single plane area are the Offenhauser. There's a Porto, there's a Porto Sonic and a Supersonic, but, uh, you know, they're hard to get. And, and I hear they don't make a lot of intakes and they're also like 700, 750 bucks. Um, and not available for months out. So uh, I don't know, but right now we don't really have a great single plane street strip intake offering unless, like I said, you go find a torker on a Facebook marketplace or eBay or something like that. So I hope this brought you guys some value. I hope that helps. I'll move the camera around to give you, uh, you know, a few more closing shots here as uh, we roll out.